Hey, good morning to everybody. So this battery is fully in balance right now. Hi, welcome to this new episode. So we're just continuing the servicing the high voltage battery from the 2017 uh, Toyota CHR as well as Sensors. Once again, the same fourth generation Toyota Prius Eco. So it's been over 24 hours. It's about 237 volts divided by 28. It's giving us about 8.46 volts per module. So we can say that this battery is fully in balance right now. So the process is now. We need to assemble back the battery, install it in the vehicle, and let's do a capacity test to see what readings we get with the scan. So if you want to learn, stick around, and then we will continue it. Don't miss it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, well, let me just remind you one again, once again that the complete circuit of the battery, it doesn't matter if you have, if you have plugged in the service plug or not, this service plug doesn't open the circuit. So it's something very dangerous that you need to be aware of, all right? Hi again. So I did the warning last episode, but it's always good to be reminded. The service plug grip in this vehicle does not open the circuit anywhere inside the battery so this is a piece of crap i'm still don't understand the reason of this you might be stunned. hey Jose, you be stubborn but yeah it's about safety your safety if you're putting your hands in this type of battery okay from the 2017 uh, toyota chr as well as the fourth generation toyota prius eco so just be aware when you're putting your hands take the necessary precautions all right so we will continue then so as I say, what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to turn off the charger. That's it, it's done. I'm gonna take off the fan, all right. And I'm gonna have to disconnect. I'm gonna turn off the bat, turn off the battery, turn around, disconnect the positive and the negative. And I'm going to begin to assemble back this battery. Mm, well, I'm not gonna show you how I assemble back. Well, in the last episode, you will see clearly how we take it apart. So we're just gonna skip that part for now, right? Just simply follow the same procedures that we did disassembling, just backwards. Okay, so let me assemble back the battery. We will continue then. All right, so we disconnected from the charger. We fully assembled the battery. It's ready to install in the vehicle. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna install it in the vehicle. We're gonna hook up our scan tool and let's check those weird numbers with the voltage. Let's see how we monitor the voltage in this hybrid battery, okay? We're gonna do a capacity test, but of course we need to start the vehicle, warm up the vehicle, warm up the battery, and let's see those numbers in the scan tool. They're gonna to be very, very interesting, all right? Okay, so stick around and we will continue the, all right. Before we install the battery, you know what? I'm gonna leave this service plug grip plug it in immediately because this crap doesn't make any difference being plugged in or not it is still dangerous like if you're dealing with the high voltage cable which of course I'm not gonna touch them okay now there's no voltage right here in the outlet of course because they need to they need to pass through the uh, contactors but still it doesn't make any difference having the service plug grip or not just to let the interlock system know that it's plugged in or not but when it comes to safety and opening the circuit uh -uh, it's crap but anyway that's how it is let's continue it let's install the battery now it doesn't really matter how clean you keep in your vehicle is always inside the battery's cabin is gonna get dirt so what i'm gonna do i will terminate the dirt Get out of here. Woo! So we will continue then. As you can see, the vehicle is in ready mode. Engine running. All right. Of course, 
because the battery is fully balanced it's high state of charge all right so the battery is fully assembled so once you put the couch you literally sit on top of the high voltage battery huh so everything is fine but look what i have here so i just extract the battery cooling fan air filter so as you can see whoa it was showing me a lot of debris and it's like toasted it's normal time and especially because this vehicle is i ah, look it's sticky my hands are sticky as hell so anyway what i'm gonna do is just gonna blow up this filter with air this is actually a replaceable part okay but because it's a light filter you can clearly see air passes through with absolutely no problem the reason is because the debris all comes over here is not big uh, debris or whatever but this filter is more than enough should be clean probably every six months every two months depends but in this case this vehicle is sticky as hell so this filter is sticky so i'm gonna have to wash it okay and then dry it but anyway, so far the vehicle is uh, running fine. I'm just gonna clean this and finish the assemble all the accessories. And let's hook up this can to see those readings in this battery. Okay, so we will continue that. I took a ton of debris out of this cartridge filter. Because as normal, it takes absolutely all the dirt and debris from the vehicle's cabin. So it's something you always need to be aware of, especially if you have a filter, because a filter, okay, obviously reduces the passage of air. So it goes dirty pretty much faster than whether like the old models to a Prius and Prius C that doesn't have any filter. Yet still needs to be serviced, at least the filter, more often. Okay, so everything is fully clean. I tried to get rid of the, all this sticky material, but it's very sticky. But I got rid of it, most of it. So. I'm going to assemble, finish to assemble everything, and finally let's hook up the scandal. Let's check those data. We will continue then. And voila, it's like nothing ever happened here. The only difference is the battery has been fully serviced and it's as good as new. But let's hook up the scandal now and see some data. Give me a second, we will continue. Actually, you know what? We will continue nothing. I'll stay right here. Maybe. All right. Woo! All right, give me a second. <laughs> all right. First of all, let's hook up Dr. Prius first. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what she's showing us. Let's hold on. Give it a little patience. I want to make this live with you. All right. So what do we have here now? Let's see. We have the total pack. 220 volts. Blade average voltage. But this is a huge lie. Okay, you never monitor the blade voltage. So that's a lie. The current. State of charge. Delta zero. Nice voltage difference 0 0.07 do you really think there's from the block number two to block number three 0 0.7 volt there's my point so this setup is a little different so one two three four five circuits are monitoring more than pairs in one single unit so it's just simple it's double so we have nine circuits that we completely monitoring at this moment five of them with a different voltage so then of course if we do we're gonna do it anyway let's see if we can do a, a capacity test and drain the current at 6.5 to see what this system is showing us all right so we will continue then okay so listen up to this so charging the battery manually before doing the capacity test, she allowed me to charge the battery to 95%, 239 volts, as you can see. All right, so I'm gonna do the capacity test now, okay? The vehicle's warm up, everything is fine, so let me go to the capacity test. All right, and let's just simple, let's follow the procedure. 
Let's drain the battery at 6.5. Here we go. All right, that's it. So as you can see with this system, she monitors the voltage from the modules totally different, okay? However, she's allowing me to do the capacity test, which is great. But then, let's see how much time we have about, we still have 868 seconds. Let's see how much it takes to discharge from its maximum state of charge, which is in this case, she allowed me to charge the battery fully to 90, over 90%. Which 95%, which is I'm not sure if it's just not an accurate reading. If it's not accurate, this the reading between uh, Dr. Prius and this system, but it's allowing me to do the capacity test. So I'm just draining the battery at the moment, and I will share with you. Let's just wait because this is gonna take a little while. Because remember, this is 28 uh, blade battery, so usually takes a little longer especially when she's in good condition so let's just wait a little while until she discharge and we will continue then she's taking a long time she's taking forever she's taking forever to discharge so we will continue <laughs> So here's the fact, she took um, about almost 15 minutes, okay, showing us clearly an estimate of 93% of capacity is in new condition, but look, on balance block detected, one, two, eight, nine. So where the hell that come from? Well, it's probably because this stuff, software is not made uh, for this setup vehicle, okay? Uh, probably as far as I can see because this vehicle obviously monitors the voltage of the modules totally different than Prius does now remember this app is about Prius I'm not sure uh, once again if it's supposed to be matched or not but anyway 93% compare to the 79% that we did before taking it out uh, before servicing I consider a great, great recovery. Now remember, we're not talking about any deep cycling, no, no, no. Basic service, just fully rebalanced, okay? So this battery, it is indeed in great condition, okay? We can say that. Now, okay, so we finished the capacity test. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna hook up the scantle, we're gonna uh, hook up the launch software, and let's see what numbers, what data we can read with launch. So, just give me a, just give me a moment and we will continue. Let me get out of here. Oh, 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 oh! So, <laughs> she's not compatible with torque. Let me see. Oh, so, okay, so we know now that you ain't using torque with CHR or fourth generation Toyota Prius, okay? So, let's get out of torque and let's go with launch now we will continue all right so we're here in launch so let's check the data let's see what we got let's give it a little time to... <laughs> right well anyway she gives us a very 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 nice results okay so let's see AC consumption accelerator pedal status I don't want to see this, I want to see the battery. All right. By the way, the 12 volt battery, not looking good. 12 volt battery, for some reason I had to recharge it. Okay, body control, no, no, no. Boost converter fail. Very nice, let me see, delta zero. Engine idle requests. Let's see. EV mode. Well, she's giving me a lots of data over here. Everything about the inverter, everything. But I don't want to see none of this. I want, okay, there you go. I want to see the pack. Okay, so launch is also showing me exactly the data how it is. 
okay high voltage and EV can uh, uh, activate condition normal very nice okay the voltage from the block number one 16 16 number two and then number three monitoring with more blocks together one single circuit is giving me 33 volts as well as four five six and seven but then eight and nine normal back again hmm all right so let me see Got the cooling fan drive request no well because it's, i'm using the air conditioner so the temperature mm, well actually look the temperature is low at the moment in the battery all right battery current for driving control i don't want to make you guys crazy with all this bunch of data but the important thing is that the battery recover very well okay and indeed it had a uh, an improvement just by simply practicing the basic preventive maintenance services that for nickel metal hydride you need to do this if you want to keep your vehicle for years and years because remember this battery is create corrosion corrosion creates resistance hence giving you battery to become overheated okay and then of course it's gonna lose capacity and then bye bye battery so we could say we're finished with this uh, Toyota CHR for generation Toyota Prius nickel metal hydride. It was a great experience. I hope you, hope you guys like it. If you're liking this content, please hit that red button, like and subscribe, guys. You gotta support the channel. Great, great more content is coming. I'll be posting everything, every single interesting case that comes to the shop, any type of diagnostic, new vehicles. You will see it for sure in Hybrid Solution Diagnostics, which is a channel made for you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the very next episode. Bye-bye. I'll see you then.